Should you buy Payday 3 or not? Well, hopefully in this video I'll give you enough information so you can get your own opinion on the game and get across what I think about the game. So if you don't know what Payday 3 is, it's a sequel, funnily enough, to Payday 2. A co-op heist game, essentially. It's an extremely popular series. Payday 2 right now can still get peaks of 50,000 players on Steam alone, which is really damn good, especially considering that Payday 2 came out 10 years ago, and it's still one of the most played games on Steam, which is crazy. So there's got to be something good behind the series, right? So Payday 3 carries on the formula of Payday 2. It's a four player heist game. It's not just banks that you heist. You go through and try to rob other locations as well, such as a nightclub, a museum, and like a factory slash dock area that holds loads of shipping containers. The general gameplay flow of Payday is that you start sort of in like a stealth section. You can just run around the area. There are certain like private or secure areas that you're not allowed to get into. If you look at the top of the screen, when you're in the stealth section, it will tell you what type of area you're in. If you're in a public area, then yeah, you're safe to do whatever. But if you're in like a private or secure area, you shouldn't really be there. And if you get spotted, you'll be escorted out. Or if you do anything a bit suspicious, then the guards just may turn on you. And that will lead to loads of police coming in, the SWAT coming in and just being like a massive, almost like a horde shooter while you try to like steal everything you can from the location you're in. But it is possible to actually complete missions completely in stealth without getting spotted. And so far it's something I've only actually been able to accomplish once. But I think as people play the game more and get used to like the strategies of each area, I think more and more people will be able to complete missions stealthily. But before you get into a mission, you've got to choose your loadout. You choose one of a number of characters and one thing that's pretty good in how the game handles what character you choose because there cannot be multiple people of the same character. So you choose four characters to play as in order of like your preference, right? So I choose this British guy. I want to generally play as the British guy, but if I can't play as him, it will choose my second choice or my third and then my fourth, right? So it's a good little thing they've put into the game. You then choose your loadout, what sort of primary weapon, secondary weapon, gadget. You've got to choose your appearance as well, which kind of suit, gloves or mask you want to wear. The cosmetics, you know, they are just cosmetics. They don't affect how the game plays at all. So you don't have to worry about choosing the right like suit or something. So jumping into a mission, I will say that the stealth sections of where you start out before you go hot, get spotted, are probably like the best part of the game because it is like this big puzzle right you need to figure out how to get into the location how to get past the security how to unlock the vault or unlock something else all the little secrets and optional stuff you can do to get more and more cash and i do like casing the places out right and yeah for me these moments are the best part of the game but generally it's quite difficult to stay in stealth like I said, or I think I've already said, I've only managed to complete a whole stealth playthrough once, and I've played many games so far. One thing I would say is try not to play with AI teammates because your AI teammates are extremely limited in what they can do. In the stealth sections, they can do nothing. They won't go into any like private or secure area. They will only stay in a public area, meaning that they can't help you at all. So definitely try not to play with AI. You'll want to be playing with other players. Now, when you do go hot and the police start coming in, this is where, for me, a lot of the problems with the game comes in because you discover that you are extremely spongy, right? You can take a lot of damage. For some people, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it just doesn't feel right. And the police, are really spongy and by spongy i mean they can take a hell of a lot of shots right if they're armored which they will be from pretty much the get-go like the first wave will be like standard police but then after that they'll be armored up and they'll take like multiple headshots to kill one guy and they'll be sending in a hell of a lot of police at once and just having to spray 
so many people in their head for so many shots to kill them, it doesn't feel right. For me, they are way too spongy. And since you yourself are spongy, like you can take a lot of damage, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of challenge in individually killing the police that are assaulting the building. The challenge seems to come from just the sheer mass amount of police they send at you. And because they can send so many in at once and they're really spongy, it can feel just boring, right? Though on the flip side of this, sometimes it is actually fun. It's really strange. Like when I was starting off and playing in the early games, like I did find that these police assault sections were going on for too long, too many spongy enemies. And I was like, yeah, this is kind of a bit boring and monotonous. But as I kept playing the game more and more, I started to enjoy them more which sounds really strange but yeah as i started to play the game more i was enjoying it and i think that's because some of the later weapons you can unlock or even some early weapons are a lot better than the sort of standard assault rifle when i unlocked the mk14 which is a single shot semi-automatic rifle you can kill the armored police to the head in one shot and that just made it so much better for me. So I would recommend to all you guys, if you end up buying the game, use the MK14. There could be some weapons after that you unlock, which are better, but I don't know yet. But the MK14 is an absolute must, I think, especially until you unlock some later stuff. So if we call these police assault sections essentially a horde mode, because that's what it is. They just keep coming in in waves and waves and waves until a certain amount of waves come in and then they just keep coming and coming and coming but that's like right at the end usually when you're about to escape and one thing that payday 3 does pretty well is give you different enemy varieties there's few horde shooters out there which completely fail at this and just don't give enough enemy variety so you usually get the standard police they'll be armored up and stuff you'll get a shield guy which can you know block bullets but if you shoot the glass in the shield it'll break the glass and you can kill him through that or you know run around behind him and just shoot him that way you get these ninja sam fisher guys grenade ears taser guys a juggernaut type guy from call of duty like if he's super armored and have like a minigun or something so thankfully it's just not normal police or normal armored police that come in they do throw in a little bit of variety it's almost like the special infected from left for dead you get all the normal zombies, but then you get these other ones dropped in here and there to keep you on your toes. So yeah, I know this has been a bit of a mixed message from me around the assault sections where I say they're quite boring, but then I ended up enjoying them. And yeah, that, that is just what my experience was. It sounds strange. Usually if I find something boring, it stays boring, but I started to enjoy them more. Now, one thing that I will talk about quite negatively and if I was someone who would give review scores out for certain sections of a game. So now I'm going to talk about the gunplay, right? And for me, the gunplay would be at best a 5 out of 10. And that's just for one reason. And that's because the game uses a Bloom recoil system. If you don't know what Bloom is, pretty much when you ADS and shoot an automatic weapon, Instead of the bullets coming straight out the barrel of the gun, as soon as they leave the barrel, they'll angle off and just spread around where you're aiming, right? Bullets leave the barrel and go forward. They don't leave the barrel and straight away, like, come out at an angle. That just doesn't happen, right? Guns are made to be accurate. Imagine if people would make guns that would just be super inaccurate as soon as the bullet left the barrel, right? Now, this sort of recoil system is present in a lot of first-person shooters. Games that I would generally consider to be more casual or console-focused, games like Battlefield, all use a Bloom system, apart from Battlefield 5, and Battlefield 5 has the best gunplay of any Battlefield game. I'm not talking about Time to Kill, just the gunplay in general. And generally, games that don't use the Bloom system will be sort of more hardcore tactical games, like Escape from Tarkov, Hell Let Loose, Squad. Now the reason why Bloom for me is so bad is because there's no way to 
like fully master a balloon recoil system because while there'll be some vertical recoil as you're firing an automatic weapon you can't fully like control where the bullets are going because they're just blooming and going around where you're aiming instead of where you're aiming that's just how bloom works now if it was using a more let's say normal recoil system where the bullets will go where you're aiming and then the gun will be recoiling upwards and going diagonal a bit you can fully control that if you're good enough so you can absolutely laser people so it really rewards player skill right because the only way to fully control bloom is to not shoot your gun because you need to wait for the bloom to reset so for me that's why the gunplay is a 5 out of 10 at best okay bloom is just not enjoyable for me right i want to be able to fully laser people controlling that weapon even if i have to pull my mouse down from like the whole like width of my desk i'll do it right and that's also one of the reasons like i said earlier when you get the mk14 which is a single shot weapon when you start using that and can kill people in one shot to the head and because a single shot you don't have to worry about this bloom system you can quickly just tap people in the head one after the other without having to worry about rubbish bloom recoil so if you're into big progression systems there is quite a lot of progression in the game as you level up you unlock more weapons and as you use those weapons you rank up those weapons so then you can unlock attachments for them also as you rank up there are skill points to put into a big skill tree and there's a lot of different skills so if you're really into progression you will be playing this game a lot especially if you want to unlock everything so if you've been wondering what this music that's been playing in the background is that's the payday 3 soundtrack and it is fucking superb this soundtrack doesn't play when you're doing the self sections it only plays when you go hot and i've been so tempted many times just to go hot straight away just so the soundtrack can kick in and i can start slaying people the soundtrack is so damn good i need to quickly talk about microtransactions now right now for payday 3 there are no microtransactions but for payday 2 there is 81 different microtransactions available and i think they're all cosmetics or music bundles to add into the game so right now i can't comment on the pricing model for any microtransactions for payday 3 but based off payday 2 there will be and i just hope they won't be priced like too highly because i think many microtransactions they're just way overpriced like ten dollars for a skin right is that worth like one sixth or one fifth of the total game price like no of course it's not but looking at payday 2 their microtransactions seem to range from now sorry i'm gonna have to use british money here two pounds 49 to 5.99 based on like cosmetics or weapons and extra heists so i don't think they'd be priced too badly one fear i do have about payday 3 though is now this is really just like a personal thing for me that these four player co-op games how long i will actually be playing it for yes there's a really big progression system in the game but for me that's like not enough to keep playing and playing because if i'm playing like right now and i'm doing really well and not failing any heists then making myself like stronger in quotation marks like stronger with better skills or better weapons it doesn't have as much draw to me as it might do for other people so i do question how long people will be playing this game for Although, if you remember what I said earlier, Payday 2 released 10 years ago and it still gets peaks of up to 50,000 players. So maybe the game won't just click with me for too long, but for many people, it will. But ultimately, do I recommend getting Payday 3 or not? And I would say yes. While I was finding the early police assaults kind of boring, as I started to play the game more, I was enjoying them more. And I wasn't playing with like friends, I was just playing with randoms. So I think if you was to get this game with a bunch of friends, it would be so much better. I mean, it will be so much better playing with friends because you can just have a laugh and shit talk each other, right? So yeah, I recommend Payday 3. I reckon anyone who picks it up will have a decent time with it. Give the video a like if you liked it. 
a dislike if you didn't. If you've already played Payday 3, let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. Subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.